Okay, Sam. I think you can kick us off. Well, welcome everyone. I'm so glad to have um, such a great turnout for tonight uh, for our presentation, Saratoga Springs Train Stations Architecture and Impact. Um, before we get started, I just wanna thank all of you who um, made a contribution to all of our members and donors throughout the year, and um, especially the New York uh, State Council on the Arts, um, who provides generous operating support for us. Uh, without their support and others like you, we couldn't be offering the programs that we are offering tonight and throughout the year. I'm particularly excited about this program because um, trains and water are what really often uh, influence urban development and certainly trains uh, coming to Saratoga and uh, was certainly a major factor in how our city developed and why it became such a destination. So I look forward to hearing from Richard Chait about his presentation about railroads. I'm sure I will learn something new as I always do anytime we are fortunate enough to have a presentation. Um, I, for those of you, I see there's some new faces and names out there. So for those of you who may not be familiar uh, with us, uh, the Saratoga Springs Preservation Foundation was started in 1977 to preserve the architectural, cultural, and landscape heritage of Saratoga Springs. Uh, this was at a time when Saratoga didn't look like it did today. Uh, it was uh, really much different. But as you can see from today that our historic architecture and our history is like critical to Saratoga being a success that it is. This past year, we've had a really exciting year. Um, those of you may be familiar with 65 and 69 Phyla Street, uh, two historic properties that have been on our endangered list since it was, um, since its inception in 1978. Uh, the previous owners uh, were, um, intentionally neglecting them in hopes of demolition. And we were able to um, finally uh, thwart their um, desire. And um, actually they ended up selling both properties. And in fact, uh, the white one on, on your, I guess your left is 65 Phyla Street built in 1851 by AJ Patterson who later owned a spring. Uh, spring house on Phyla Street and was later a Jewish boarding house. We acquired that property thanks to some generous um, donors and members who helped us uh, secure the financing to purchase this building and we're really excited because we're going to undertake an exterior rehabilitation and stabilization of this building and uh, we're excited to undertake this project. We hope to be going to the Design Review Commission uh, with our application, like everybody else does in our community who lives in a historic district. And we're excited to go through the process ourselves. And that will um, hopefully take place in the next month. Uh, the, the red house that was also um, proposed to be demolished was purchased by new owners. Uh, they're going to make it their home, their private residence and raise their family there. And we're excited about their project. Uh, another project that we're really excited that we were able to accomplish this past year is the Smiley Bracket Cottage at 166 Excelsior Avenue. In fact, uh, railroad tracks uh, run behind this property, uh, or used to, I should say, and uh, the Smiley Bracket Cottage was built in 1872 by a, a woman, Sarah Smiley, who had a really remarkable history, along with Charles Brackett who was a screenwriter who won several Oscars for his work with Billy Wilder as a screenwriter. And this building has also been on our endangered list since 1998. And we are excited that this past uh, December with the support of the city council, I mind you a unanimous support, we were able to designate this a local landmark providing present preservate uh, protection for this important piece of Saratoga history that was not located in a historic district or in an architectural review district and had no uh, protection. So we are really excited about those two accomplishments. Um, for those of you who aren't so familiar, we do some of our work is through advocacy and uh, that unfortunate, uh, we weren't, we haven't been as successful as we have in advocating for 269 Broadway, 
Uh, this is a new building that is proposed to be on South Broadway, right next to the Spa uh, Catholic High School. Uh, we had concerns about the height, scale, and mass uh, that recently was approved by the Design Review Commission in a four to three vote. Um, sort of the first close vote that we've had um, in a building like this in such a prominent location and large development. Uh, so through uh, advocacy such as uh, what I was just talking about with Smiley Brackett and 269 Broadway through restoration like we're undertaking with 65 Phyla Street, and along with educational programs like today and other ones that uh, I'm sure Nicole will tell you about that are coming up in the future and our historic homes tour. And um, let's see, did I, oh, and we provide technical assistance to homeowners uh, or property owners, I should say, whether it's from new construction or not. Um, we helped, uh, we, we are happy to assist people who are going through the, the process of building or making changes to their historic buildings. With that, uh, the other exciting thing that took place this year is because of our supporters and uh, that we are so fortunate to have, we were able to expand our staff. Um, uh, we have gone from, at one point was uh, a staff of, uh, let's see, when Nicole started almost six years ago, uh, we started with mainly a staff, full-time staff of two with a part-time bookkeeper that worked remotely three hours a week. And we are thrilled to have Ann McDonough, who is our part-time admin, uh, who's gradually increased uh, hours, and she now works uh, nearly uh, 20 hours a week. We, and then I did mention Patty, our bookkeeper, but I'm also really excited to have Jackie Bungie um, join us as our um, events and programs coordinator. So she's going to be, you're going to see, be seeing more of her and Nicole as we go through this year. And uh, we're excited to have her join us. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Nicole, um, my illustrious right hand person behind the scenes, the wizard behind the curtain, uh, our programs and membership director and have her share a little bit more. And uh, then we will get started with Richard. And thank you everybody for coming tonight from all over. I love seeing where you're all coming from and thank you. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, we are, Jackie and I and Richard Chait are all in our office in Saratoga Springs. So that is why you might see us with our masks on or off as we're going through the program. We are super excited to have you all here. Uh, we I mentioned this at the start, but if you were just tuning in, we had approximately 100 people join us or uh, ask for the link for the program afterwards, which is just incredible. We're really excited about it. We, Samantha mentioned that I would talk about some future programs that we have coming up. We do have a program in February for Black History Month. So that is going to be a program about Solomon Northup, and that will be uh, uh, February 24th, and we will be sharing uh, all of that information soon, but you get a little sneak peek at what our calendar has in store. And then uh, our Historic Homes Tour will be in May, like we always have, and we're really excited for that again this year, and then our porch party will follow that. So keep an eye out. Now that you have joined us for this program, you will continue to get emails from us about future programs, about our advocacy efforts, about programs from our community partners. So definitely make sure that you're getting our emails. And if you're not, feel free to reach out to me and let us know. One other thing that I want to mention uh, for since we do have so many new people on this uh, program tonight, I wanted to let you know that we are a membership based organization. So if you're not a current member, you're welcome to go to our website, www.saratogapreservation.org and join as a member. It really is critical to the work that we do. Uh, our donations are wonderful as well, but our membership is kind of the heartbeat of the organization. So if you are not a member, we invite you to join. You do get discounts to events and programs. And usually a few times a year, we try and have a special members only program. So just some fun benefits that you get for that, that you can see a full list of all of the perks of being a member of the foundation and knowing that you're helping support preservation in our community. 
And I am most excited to now introduce Jackie Bungie, who is our events and programs coordinator. Uh, as many of you know, for a long time, and Sam had mentioned that too, we were a full-time staff of two. So it takes a lot uh, behind the scenes. And we are very thankful for the work that Ann McDonough, our administrative assistant does to help make these events and programs go off flawlessly. And I'm really excited to now have Jackie on our team to help uh, with our events and programs as well. She recently moved to Saratoga Springs from the West Coast. So, so far she's enjoying the snow. <laughs> uh, but she is, uh, she has a background in museums and exhibit design. And again, we're just really excited to have her uh, join us and to see how, how we can grow this organization and continue to be a force in the community. And thank you again to all of you for joining us. And I will turn it over to Jackie. Well, hello everyone. And thank you to Sam and Nicole for the very warm welcome tonight. I'm delighted to be here. And I am so pleased to be able to introduce tonight's presenter, Richard Chait. Richard Chait has been an avid rail fan for many years. And this is reflected in his writings and his societal activities. Born and raised in Rochester, New York, he has spent many summers enjoying Saratoga Springs and the surrounding areas. He currently maintains a residence in Saratoga Springs and has gained full appreciation for the many contributions that the rail and transportation has made to rapid growth of this area. And before I hand the presentation over to Richard, I want to let the audience know that we will have a question and answer period and session after the presentation. So we ask that all questions be reserved for the end. And if you are on Zoom, you can add questions in the chat box. And if you are on Facebook, you can add your questions in the comment section and Nicole will be reviewing them. And now with no further ado, thank you so much again for all of your support. It means so much to us and we hope you enjoy tonight's presentation. Go ahead. Well, thank you, Jackie, for that very kind introduction. I appreciate that very much. Uh, very pleased to be here, cold weather and all, and talk about train stations and their architecture. Uh, before we get going, I just want to make a few comments. Uh, I want to express my appreciation to Nicole and also Jackie for setting up the program, uh, working behind the scenes. Uh, very much appreciate that. And to all of you for taking time out to participate. Uh, we'll have questions and answer period at the end and I look forward to interacting with you. Uh, to my family uh, who, has been very, who have been very supportive, I could not have done this without that support. And to those organizations here in Saratoga that have been most helpful with material and answering my many questions, uh, I express my, my thanks to the Saratoga Springs History Museum, the Saratoga Springs Public Library, and the Saratoga Area Visitors Center. Lastly, I would like to dedicate this, this talk to my son, Michael, who was ill and in the hospital in Michigan. Uh, with that, uh, let me just mention that cold weather is no stranger to me being born and raised in Rochester uh, and going to school in Troy, New York. Uh, it was just part of growing up. Uh, train travel in Rochester was the way to get from point A to point B. And my parents came from very large families and in the New York City area, there was no I-90, no throughway, no airplanes. You had to take the train. And then uh, in, 19, in the 1950s, when I attended college at RPI, went back and forth by train to Rochester. So I'm very familiar with uh, the train station in Rochester. And I'd like to begin the talk, just talking a little bit about that because that had so much architecture and really started on my way to appreciating the architecture of train stations. So, um, Let's go back. Let's go to the uh, first uh, the first image. Okay, this is the train station of Rochester. It's no longer there. The architect uh, here was uh, 
Claude Bragdon, uh, a genius in my opinion. Uh, if you look carefully at this <clears throat> train station, you see um, uh, these semicircle uh, uh, windows, I'll call them. Uh, and it was Bragdon's uh, thought here that he would emulate driving wheels on steam engines. Uh, this is uh, very unique at the time. The station was built in 1914 and it was one of the most beautiful train stations in all of, of the United States. He was a, uh, a person who, attend, who paid attention to detail. Uh, it was a Beaux-Arts uh, architecture and uh, the driving wheels and uh, this is the entrance to the station. And, and you can see uh, right here uh, on the left corner, this spoked wheel, which is another, uh, uh, another uh, tie in to, to the railroads. Uh, he just left nothing to, to, uh, to imagination. Going into the station, um, it, was, it was equally as beautiful. Come down the stairs, and look at the brickwork, the ceramic tiles uh, all throughout the station. Uh, the, the waiting room was, was fairly large at the time. Uh, the length of the station uh, was twice the width and the width was twice the height. So everything was in proportion. He harmonized everything. And just a short story uh, about those dimensions, there was a point in the station where you could stand and hear people talking far away. I never did find that point. Uh, my high school physics teacher never did tell me where it was, but he would go to the station and, and test it out every so often. So that was something that was always in the back of my mind whenever I attended and went through that, that station. Um, this gives you the, an indication of some of the beauty of the station. This entoplature was, was uh, uh, at the top of the, of the octagonal uh, columns. And, and uh, you can see the, the, the ceramic detail that, uh, that prevailed. Uh, the brickwork on top was multicolored. The bricks in the, uh, in the column were multicolored. It was just a beautiful thing to go in, almost like attending a, an art museum. Uh, his efforts didn't stop there in, in Rochester. He, he uh, was the architect for the first universal church, which is still uh, in operation. Uh, it's, uh, you can see the, the ceramic uh, and the stone uh, uh, beauty here at the top. And in the background is, is the, is the Art Deco Xerox building, a stark contrast to the first universal uh, church. So uh, with that background uh, and saying that, that this uh, type of introduction to architecture of, of, of uh, train stations, let me uh, change gears and now go to, um, to uh, uh, talk about uh, train stations in Saratoga and, and in the surrounding area. Uh, these are the um, railroads that through the years have uh, come through Saratoga. Uh, it's like Rochester, it was a, a, railway, a railroad hub uh, all the way from 1832 when the Schenectady and Saratoga first came to Saratoga. Uh, and operated their first train uh, and, and then continuing down through uh, the Rensselaer in Saratoga who, who leased that railroad to Delaware and Hudson, then leased the, the, the uh, Rensselaer in Saratoga and, and, and then the Adirondack com Company, which we'll talk about uh, under T.C. Durant, wanted to connect up with the Adirondacks, North Creek, and his hopes were to connect up with Lake Ontario, uh, but that didn't happen. He got as far as North Creek. And we'll talk about the Adirondack branch as well. Uh, the railroad up to Mount McGregor 
and then the Hudson Valley Railway Company. And uh, I think finally, uh, I think that's it. Uh, but uh, as far as, so that's a good 200 years of, 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 of railroad, uh, railroads in Saratoga. And as I mentioned, um, this is the, the first station here was the, the Schenectady in Saratoga. Um, and that was over at that time, Marvin Square, now, now Franklin Square. And um, this was taken over, uh, as I said before, by the uh, Rensselaer and Saratoga Railroad, uh, who operated the first regularly scheduled trains to Saratoga around 1835, when um, the uh, DNH basically uh, purchased the, the the Schenectady and Saratoga Railway, uh, or the, the Rensselaer and Saratoga Railway. Um, they moved it a little bit closer to downtown and built this beautiful station. And we'll talk about that. Now the year is 18, 1871, and um, this uh, station existed until about 1899 uh, when there was a fire that basically destroyed the entire uh, structure. Uh, it was, it was uh, the structure was rebuilt, a uh, little bit different architecture. We'll talk about that in, in just a minute. So let's go back to that 1871 DNH station. Uh, very evident that this is Second Empire, Mansard Roof is the clue. Uh, you can see along side here, uh, all the, the, the stage coaches and taxis, uh, horse driven, horse powered, uh, just waiting for the trains. And it looks like on the left side here that there are several trains in the station already. Uh, Second Empire architecture uh, in 1871 uh, also seemed to appear in the, in the town hall. Saratoga Springs was not a city yet, so we can't call it a city hall. And uh, you don't see that today. It's, it has been removed. And, it, and, and basically that the, the city hall as we see it um, is Italian 8 but it didn't look that way in 1871. But as you go around the city, um, there are many, many examples of, of uh, Second Empire uh, on Filer Street, on, in Franklin Square, uh, on Walton Street, uh, row houses on Woodlawn Avenue, uh, and the Saratoga Arms building downtown. It's just beautiful to just to drive around and see this architecture all throughout the city. Um, Saratoga Springs was not the only uh, city that whose main railroad station at the time was uh, Second Empire. This is the New York Central uh, station in New York City. Grand it's, uh, Vanderbilt turned this. The, the um, Grand Central Station, not the Grand Central Terminal that exists today, but the Grand Central Station. Also Second Empire, the architect was uh, John Snook, S-N-O-O-K. Um, and uh, this was uh, torn down in around 1914 because uh, they no longer allowed steam engines in the city and, and Vanderbilt had to build a new uh, station or terminal, which he termed the Grand Central Terminal. Okay, let's talk now about the station uh, that was uh, built in 1900 to replace the the station I just described here the, with the architecture Second Empire, this is a new station. Uh, 
and it lasted until about 1959. Uh, and I termed this architecture High Victorian Gothic. Uh, you may have another opinion and you, please feel free to express that at the end, but that was, this is what I thought it was, uh, completely different than the Second Empire station that, that uh, we saw before. Uh, this particular photograph is interesting because when they filmed the uh, Saratoga Trunk movie, uh, this is what it looked like. And I'll talk about that, that, uh, th that film in just a second. Um, but things were really hopping in, 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 in uh, Saratoga Springs at the time. Uh, there was uh, the New York Central Railroad decided that they would run a Saratoga Limited express train from New York City up the Hudson Valley through Troy and into Saratoga. Three and about three and a half hours, one could take the train in the afternoon and be in, 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 uh, in Saratoga uh, in time to enjoy the nightlife here and go to the track maybe or or, or, uh, or, or go, go, go over to the casino, whatever. Uh, but that was what the New York Central thought of it at the time. Uh, it was beneficial for them and profitable for, for them to run this Saratoga Limited, which was kind of interesting because um, uh, it never has been duplicated since. This is how busy it was when, I don't know if this is the Saratoga Limited or not, but these are people and men and women getting off the train. You can see the dress. It's now we're about in uh, circa 1920, hopping off the train. Uh, and who knows where they're going? Uh, they had a multi, uh, multi, multiple choices. Uh, some decided to go to the track. And you see the Queen Anne structure of the track in the back, which is kind of interesting, but not much has changed at the track. A few additions, a few modifications, but it's just beautiful. We enjoy it. We've been uh, going to uh, the Saratoga race course since 1980, uh, every year. And uh, it's just been a, a, a very, very wonderful experience. People weren't the only uh, weren't the only, uh, uh, let's say, uh, traffic going to the track. There, the horses were coming here down Circular Street. There, was no, there were no vans at the time to, to, to transport the horses. Um, you can see the Bachelor uh, building in the background here, uh, possibly Second Empire as well. Uh, so they've come here down West Circular Street from the Delaware and Hudson uh, Yard on West Circular Street, and will come down uh, Union Avenue to the to the race course. Uh, so that's another, uh, I think, economic benefit. Um, people, horses, and students. This is these are. Uh, uh, this is a busy uh, train station, 1944, Skidmore students waiting for the train. Uh, and you can see the, the beauty of, 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 of this is probably the Laurentian, which is coming uh, from Montreal uh, uh, through Saratoga Springs and on to Troy and down into New York City on the New York Central. DNH, the Delaware and Hudson was very, very proud of their steam engines. They they had a colony shop in uh, in, in Colony uh, that they built in 1912 to modify some of these engines and and, and make them a little more a little bit more um, beautiful than they, than they were coming out of the American Lo Locomotive Company in Schenectady. Um, you can see the U.S. Hotel in the background here, and also the uh, the train station 
that I mentioned before that was built in 1900. This year is about in the 1930s, 1940s. Uh, but I just want you to take a look at how they modified this six five number 652, a, what they call a, a Pacific type uh, steam engine. Um, two drive, two uh, wheels up front, six driving wheels, three on this side and three on the back, and then four uh, wheels in the, uh, in, in the back, two on each side. But almost looks like a European steam engine. That's how much uh, uh, the Delaware and Hudson uh, wanted to, to, to beautify their, their steam engines. Not too many railroads did this. Uh, they were, uh, they just, they were very proud it's a very proud railroad. Nothing lasts forever. Uh, things got a little tough in 1959. Uh, they took the tracks out of downtown, moved them over to West Avenue. Uh, and uh, Amtrak exists right there now. And, uh, but this is the, the station that DNH built in 1959 as they moved the tracks from downtown over to the west side of Saratoga Springs. And it kind of looks to me like this is more Art Deco, but I'm, I'm not quite sure. Um, I remember it um, going through there, but uh, I don't remember too much of the detail inside. This was a, a, a tough year, 1959, because the uh, the, the, the Grand Union Hotel closed down as well. Um, you can see the automobiles uh, about the 1959 era. Uh, the architecture of the Grand Union Hotel, uh, Second Empire, uh, very evident by, by looking at the, uh, the structure on top here. So I wanna switch gears now uh, and talk uh, about uh, another railroad that uh, came through Saratoga. Uh, and I mentioned it before, the Adirondack Company, uh, T.C. Durant, after he finished his, his effort out in uh, Utah, very instrumental in the, in the Transcontinental Railway there, he set his sights on uh, building a railroad through the Adirondacks. I don't think he realized how tough a chore that was and how expensive it was, it was going to be. But he, uh, he uh, nonetheless started his Adirondack company. And uh, this is over on Grand Street now. Um, you can see the engine here. It's the, the name on the engine. I, I can't uh, get it up a little closer, but it's the General Levitt. Uh, again, for those out there who are uh, steam engine aficionados, this is a, a, a 440 uh, steam engine, very, very popular American type steam engine at the time. Excuse me. Uh, the structure of, his, of the building that, that Durant uh, modified uh, for this, for his office, for his depot, uh, is now a Greek revival. Uh, that's what how he modified the house that he purchased around 1864. He reached uh, North Creek in uh, 1871. Uh, 1889, the uh, Delaware and Hudson Railroad purchased the Adirondack Company from Durant. And uh, Durant owned a house up in North Creek, and he modified the this this structure right here. Even though uh, he no longer owned the Adirondack Company, it was now owned by the D&H. And uh, this is what his what the building uh, looks like uh, in the night in this 1927 photo. Uh, keep in mind. Um, that all the passenger service on the Ad, on the Adirondack branch, as it was known in the uh, in, in, in uh, as as, D, as the uh, DNH uh, named it, um, 
all the passenger service came through the downtown stations station, but the the freight service uh, from uh, North Creek southward came through this particular line here, uh, which passed his home uh, in uh, in in 1927 here uh, showing the photo but freight service stopped in 1959 as i said before everything moved out to west avenue so uh these tracks were torn up and um but the building still existed um fell into disrepair uh this is a photo you can see uh the roof is is needs some work um these cars here are indicative of what we saw in the late 1950s, early 1960s. Um, and in 1992, the Saratoga Springs Preservation Foundation uh, oversaw uh, the renovation of this house, fixed it up, made it more beautiful, uh, and turned it into what we see today. Uh, I think this is my photo, but I'm not sure. Uh, you, you just you just have to marvel how beautiful this this structure is, and <clears throat> uh, I would say that um, this is probably a, a Queen Anne type structure with the the beautiful uh, the porch work here, uh, the trim and everything. Um, you can see it up here, uh, and you may ha again you may have another opinion, but this is. Uh, this is uh, what I uh, have termed it. Kind of interesting, if you look uh, at this door here, I went up and I took a look at the door. <laughs> and what I found was kind of interesting at the top here, and this, this was about five years ago, uh, I took this picture, the Adirondack Railway Company. Um, I guess this was the, the office that uh, that existed in the building. Uh, and at the bottom, Dr. Thomas Durant. I, I never did quite figure out uh, what, what, wh why this name was there, but it was just kind of interesting. So if you go by uh, 117 Grand Avenue, take a look at this, in this building, uh, you'll see this, this, this name on the door. I hope it's still there. Um, extremely interesting. Uh, okay, so that's the Adirondack, uh, Adirondack Company. Uh, I want to go now to um, back to the D&H and talk about um, the line that the D&H took over from the Adirondack Company uh, and talk about three stations along the way there in their architecture. Um, this station is in Hadley, no longer there, um, but uh, this is a very unique uh, East Lake Stick, East Lake Stick architecture. Charles East Lake was the arch architect, and 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 you can see. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, I'm just going to get a sip of water here. So that's Hadley Station, the Riverside Station. Uh, you can see uh, again the the, the board-like structure, uh, typical of of, uh, of East Lake Stick architecture. Um, this is the stage meeting the uh, a, a train ready to bring the travelers over to camps that existed up uh, at that time in, in Riverside. And then finally, North Creek. So as I said before, uh, Durant established a line to North Creek. DNH bought it, purchased it, turned it into the Adirondack branch and, and ended at North Creek. Again, the East Lake uh, stick structure is very evident here. So three stations that 
I, I chose to show all had that type of architecture. Um, you can kind of see it from the end view here too. This is uh, uh, in the 1960s uh, with, when uh, the uh, Gore Mountain opened up, uh, they opened up before then, but these are DNH ran ski trains up into North Creek to, for, for those interested in going to uh, Gore Mountain. Uh, so we were talking about economy and I mean, the, the train travel was the way, was the only way to go. Uh, to get to Saratoga, to get to North Creek, you had to take the train. So it really North Creek, like Saratoga, owed its development, uh, like Samantha said, I think to the railroad, no question about it. Uh, it was the way to go. I want to just kind of summarize here where we're at. Uh, if you can see this circle, uh, North Creek here. Um, and uh, this is the main line of the DNH or Saratoga Springs. Uh, we just finished talking about this branch line, the Adirondack branch. Um, there were several branches east of Saratoga Springs. Uh, and right in, right in here in, in um, Cambridge, it was a very interesting station that uh, is now a kind of a pub, a brewery, uh, but a beautiful structure. And I'll show that uh, on the branch line again, on, on the east side of Saratoga Springs. Uh, I turned the structure late Victorian. So let's come back to the main line now. And so we're, we're right here. We're uh, at Fort Edward. We've come north of Saratoga Springs on the DNH main line that goes up and through Rouse's Point uh, uh, across the border into Canada. This is the station at Fort Edward, still very active. Uh, to me, that was uh, late Victorian as well. And uh, uh, it, it's, it, it is still uh, Amtrak. Uh, I don't think Amtrak owns it. I think the, the, the community of, of uh, Fort Edward owns it. The next station along the way is one at Westport, which is now a uh, depot theater. And we've, we've been there, it's a uh, very, very uh, nice uh, uh, structure that they have. Uh, and, and they put on some wonderful plays and musicals, uh, but I don't know with the pandemic how active they are now, but uh, we certainly enjoyed ourselves. Uh, Victorian structure uh, as well. Uh, this is the one at Port Henry. Uh, I, I think the first uh, Romanesque um, uh, structure on the, on the way, it's now a senior citizens, but Amtrak does stop there. It's a senior citizen center. I, I can't zoom in here, but I guess you'll have to take my word for it. <laughs> the Romanesque with the, 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 the stone hue, uh, 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 appearance in the front is very, very evident. Uh, I took this picture uh, on the back of, uh, from the back of the, Adir the train called the Adirondack at the time. Um, and I think it's still called the Adirondack. Amtrak was running it. Um, and uh, this was probably in the 19, 19 maybe mid 1970s, I think. This is uh, the next, uh, after Port Henry is Plattsburgh. Beautiful structure, uh, houses some small businesses, but Amtrak does stop there. Uh, this building, at all of these structures were built in the late, teen, eight, late teen, 1800s. Let's go to the next 
I, I term this late Victorian. Uh, this is the Romanesque structure at Rouse's Point just before going over the, um, the border into Canada. Uh, and I think you can see some of the, um, the, of, of the Romanesque appearance to the structure here. Uh, and again, if I could zero in here, you could be, be a little, it would be a little bit more evident. And I, I took this also from the back of the train um, that I took that in, in the period I talked about before. Okay, over the border, this is, this is something that, um, this is a, 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 ch a chateauesque structure in La Colle, Quebec, just right over the border. I got this from um, uh, the, the Bijou Historical Society who was kind enough to send me this, this picture. Um, Amtrak no longer stops there. Um, but they did it one time, uh, you know, to, to check passports and, and things that enabled visitors to get into Canada. I want to come now down to, uh, how are we doing on time, Jackie? Pardon? 7.50, okay. Uh, this is the Hudson Valley Company Railway. Um, which from the capital district all the way up to Gun Falls into Warrensburg, it was, it ran electric interurban cars um, from 1901 to 1928. Um, and they made special trips to Saratoga. This is in Troy. You can see down here at the bottom, Saratoga through car, no stops. It's like the, just like the uh, Saratoga Limited we talked about before. Uh, the station here in uh, Saratoga, now the Visitor Center, Saratoga Springs Area vi uh, Visitor Center. Uh, uh, those are structure, uh, as were a lot of the, st of the stations in the Capital District, the uh, Albany Station, same structure, Schenectady, Troy, uh, New York Central uh, was also very fond of the the Beaux-Arts uh, type of structure. This was uh, uh, built in 1915. Um, the, uh, eight, the Hudson Valley Railway Company reached Saratoga in 1903 and built this in 1915. By 1928, they were out of business. The last railroad I wanna talk about is the one to Mount McGregor um, at the corner of, uh, North Broadway and uh, on the Route 50, uh, Mount McGregor had a station in the background, I think is the uh, Excelsior Springs Hotel. I'm not sure of that, but um, that's what I think it was called. Again, a high Victorian type of structure. People would go, board the train here and travel um, up to Mount McGregor. Uh, and that was a, a heck of a climb. Uh, well, first I wanna mention that the Mount McGregor line came in right, right through across Marion Avenue, uh, Route 9, and um, it did not, it intersected with the uh, DNH right here. It was an interchange, very, very important. When, when uh, President Grant passed away in 1885, they brought his body down. And that's where the interchange was with the DNH who carried the, 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 the funeral train uh, towards Albany and onto, onto, uh, onto Buffalo. This is a steam engine going up the climb to uh, from almost sea level up a thousand feet uh, to Mount McGregor uh, up to 1.5% grade at the time, uh, no easy task. Uh, this line uh, was built in, in 1882. It lasted until 1897 when the hotel there, the Balmoral Hotel, I believe, burned down. Of 
Okay, two more slides. Uh, just I want to end uh, kind of uh, change course here. This is a circular railroad in the 19, early 1900s in Congress Park sketch. Uh, you would hand pump your way around the con con uh, Congress Park. Uh, here's another view of the back part of it. And people would just hand pump their way around the park and have a, have a great time. And so, you know, it's, it's true many times that what goes around comes around. And if you go up now to North Creek, um, you're able to ride the, the old D&H line or the Saratoga North Creek line, both out of business. But you can, the Revolution Railway um, Company uh, has made it into a rail biking experience. Very, very interesting where you kind of use foot power, you pedal your way. And here is, uh, a group uh, going uh, south out of, out, out of North Creek, uh, Hudson River on the left, uh, and you pedal these, these rail bikes and you can pedal in groups of four or two, uh, but it is a tremendous experience and we look forward to doing it again uh, this summer. So with that, um, I'm going to uh, open it up, uh, turn it over to Jack here, Nicole, and. Let's see what questions you have, any comments. I'd be very happy to, to, uh, to try and answer them. Okay. How are we doing on time? Okay. All right, let me just go and check out the comments. All right, if anybody has any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. All right. And Richard, or I have a couple here, questions and comments, so. Uh, and I will just have... I, yeah, I will, I will field the questions. If you wanna just unmute yourself, that would be perfect. Uh, so, I don't know the person's actual name, but Smarticus who <laughs> posted that he had, or she had checked um, a couple of months ago and Durant's name is still on the door. I know that you had asked that. And he said, I wonder why Leland Stanford's name is on the door. He was involved with the Durant on the Transcontinental Railroad, but have seen nothing on his involvement in the Adirondack Railroad. So I don't know if you know anything about that. I'm sorry. Oh, sure. Uh, he was saying how Leland Stanford's name is, yes, still on, uh, Durant's name is still on the door. I wonder why Leland Stanford's name is on the door as he was involved with Durant on the Transcontinental Railroad. I'm having trouble hearing you. No. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. It's all good. That's no always good to have company. Always good. Hi, everyone. I'm joining from over here. So Papaki was just asking about uh, Leland's, yeah, sorry, I have to get the names right now that I just, Okay, so Durant's name is still on the door uh, because this person had checked a couple months ago. So they were wondering why Leland Stanford's name is on the door. He was involved with Durant on the Transcontinental Railroad, but has seen nothing of his involvement in the Adirondack Railroad. Uh, that's interesting. I did not know that. Um, I don't know why it's on the door either, to be honest. Maybe we could check into that. Yeah, we can look into it, absolutely. All right, and then I posted a link to your book for everyone oh, okay, to, sure, sure. <laughs> to go and check out your book so that they can learn more. Um, Jeremy Davis says, I see a King station in Wilson on Mass, but not the record. Do you know anything about that station or was it just a platform? The King station in Wilton um, was the, uh, as far as I know, was on the uh, Adirondack branch. It's, it's still there, it's a museum. 
Um, I don't think, uh, and I could be wrong here, but I, I don't think the Mount McGregor went through went through King Station. At least I've never seen the station there. It, as I said, if you go up, I think it's 9N, you will see um, King Station there on the left-hand side. Um, they have a caboose day every, every uh, summer. Uh, and it's uh, very interesting to attend that. Uh, next one. All right. You referenced the architecture. Oh, yeah. I'll bring it back up. Uh, there is a rail line on Spring Run Trail. Which line would that be a part of? Uh, Spring Run Trail, I think that's over at West Circular Street. I'm not sure. I think there was, a histor was an historical sign there. Uh, it may have been taken down. But that is the main line of the DNH, uh, original DNH line. And to the left of that um, Spring Run Trail, um, you will see the freight house which is now uh, a bunch of small businesses, small business offices, uh, it's still there. And um, so the main line of the DNH, the original DNH line came through there, went through um, the SPAC area, um, crossed over into um, Saratoga Spa State Park, and you can still see a freight house in Saratoga Spa State Park across, <coughs> excuse me, from uh, the bottling plant, still there. And then uh, on into uh, uh, Railroad Place. All right. What's the connection between? North, what's the connection between? Uh, good question. Um, I did not mention it, um, but uh, Teddy Roosevelt was, actually vacationing up in uh, near Sanford Lake or to Hawes area, just north, uh, I think about, I'd say 30 miles north of North Creek. He was notified that President McKinley was assassinated in, uh, in Buffalo, New York. Uh, they, they immediately put uh, Mr. Roosevelt on a stage, brought him down to the North Creek station for uh, transportation uh, south. Needed from New York City to New York. My knowledge is that never went north of East Greenville, New York. And he also says, great presentation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, let me just think a minute. Um, it was a Saratoga Limited, really. Uh, I think that's what you're referring to. Um, the uh, my, my guess is that New York Central took it as far as Troy uh, and they changed engines there uh, and, and DNH took it north out of Troy. Um, the, uh, much, much like they did the Laurentian, the Laurentian uh, from Montreal through Saratoga Springs uh, came into Troy. They changed onto the New York Central from there, from Troy, through Rensselaer down to New York City. So um, yeah, once you get onto another um, uh, set of tracks owned by another railroad company, yeah, you, you, at that time you had to uh, change, change, uh, change power. Uh, something very interesting though, if you go uh, out to the, um, the Amtrak station and, and, and watch the freight trains come by, uh, the um, Norfolk Southern has trackage rights from Montreal, from Canada, down through Binghamton on the CP, on the Canadian Pacific, from uh, Montreal uh, all the way down to the Saratoga Yard. They change, they change crew, they don't change engines, uh, takes them a very short time to, to, to change the crew and on they go. Uh, but that's a deal that that, that Norfolk Southern has worked out with Canadian Pacific. Uh, and Saratoga Yard is extremely busy these days. You, you, you can't really see much there, but if you go over, 
I forgot, Geyser Road, just take a peek over the bridge there, you'll see many, many freight cars there that go uh, down to Binghamton, uh, over to Mohawk Yards, uh, and, and then there's a yard in, in, uh, near, near Albany as well. Um, this is a very key stop for, for the freight trains uh, that uh, need to be broken up and, and distributed uh, at, the, uh, at the Saratoga Springs yard. You know, when did the train stop running on what is now Railroad Avenue? 1959. That was uh, when the last train that they decided DNH because they felt they could save money. Uh, uh, there was a safety problem, I guess. Every crossing had to, you know, there's a railroad guard uh, house there now. So uh, that would slow trains down. So they moved everything out to West Avenue. 1959. I feel like I'm on the left page. This is my opinion. That's all. all right. Do you know anything about the line to Saratoga? Uh, yes, I can tell you a little bit about it. Um, uh, okay, that that was the uh, from uh, uh, Schuylerville and Saratoga line, I believe, and and. Uh, uh, it's very hard to, to figure out where they went. If you go down 9P just before you go over the bridge, there's Dyer Switch Road. Uh, you take a left down there. Uh, you don't see very much, but it came across uh, Saratoga Lake from Schuylerville and uh, headed uh, to Dyer Switch and, and then um, into, into the city of Saratoga along, um, I forgot the name, uh, East, by East Avenue there. You can see the, 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 the beverage company that was an engine house there. And that, that running path uh, is, I believe, where the, ro where the roadbed was. So uh, kind of interesting. Uh, but that's the, that was one line that I know uh, crossed over Saratoga Lake. I think there was an interurban too, a trolley that ran from the city of Saratoga to Saratoga. Uh, to, um, uh, it also stopped at the track, but I think it went to Saratoga Lake. I'm not that familiar with that trolley line, to be honest. Okay, next one from Hannah is, do you know if the building at Disney World is really modeled after the same piece in Saratoga Springs? No, I don't. I, <laughs> to be honest, I, it's been a while since I've been down to Disney World, but it, it raises an interesting question. It does. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, they look very similar from pictures. From pictures, yeah. It could yeah. very well be. I mean, and I think that's a compliment to the, the station here that was uh, on, uh, on uh, you know, on, on railroad, railroad Place there. But it's interesting in Rochester, and I think they did the same thing in Schenectady. Amtrak uh, models their latest train station in Rochester uh, after the, the Bragdon station that I talked about. They thought enough of that station that if you, you stop in Rochester, you'll see a, 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 a smaller version of that, of that station that I described earlier with the, with the, the front part uh, uh, looking much like uh, driving wheels on a, on a steam engine. Is there next one? That is a very good question as well. Um, the status of the Saratoga North Creek Railway, um, they were owned by Iowa Pacific out of Chicago. Um, Iowa, Iowa Pacific went bankrupt. Um, Saratoga North Creek Railway stopped running in, in uh, 2017 or 2018, I think. Uh, for many, many reasons, um, none, the, none the least of which was the, the, the fact that uh, their trains may not have been running on time. They were very poor housekeepers. Uh, you know, ask anybody up in North Creek, they'll tell you uh, that they stored empty tank cars along, I think it was Route 28. So there was a lot of uh, interaction, a lot of, I would say, 
hard feeling between Saratoga North Creek Railway and the citizens uh, along the along the roadbed there along the railway. Um, has there been a determination to keep the tracks for shipments? Uh, no, there's been no determination. Uh, those the what you're talking about are the tailings coming out of to Hawes. It's all taken out by truck, as far as I know. Uh, the the road the rail roadbed has not been renovated, has not been upgraded. And so I'd like to see it come out of, out of the Hawes on the rail, but I don't think anytime soon uh, you'll, you'll see that. What do you think of the architecture of the city? And what about the architecture of the Winnehan train hall, which includes architectural elements in the original country? Um, I can answer, answer maybe two thirds of your question. I've never been in Moynihan Train Hall. I don't know very much about it. Uh, as I mentioned before, where are we now? Right here. Um, the architecture of the Rochester Station, uh, the new uh, Rochester Station, Amtrak, uh, I think uh, just several years old. Um, I, I, I like it. It's 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 the the the, the it reminds me of the of the Bragdon station and I think the Schenectady station as well. Uh, they tried to uh, uh, model that after the Schenectady Bozos uh, Bozar uh, architecture and they've done a good job. Um, Twenty million dollars, uh, well worth it I think, as long as they can keep running trains. Uh, and I think that they it is a profitable run. Uh, uh, hopefully, when we get over this pandemic, we'll see the Amtrak traffic pick up and and uh, get back to normal again. But yes, I, I, I like the architecture. I wish I knew more about Moynihan Train Hall, but I don't. Okay. Uh, we have two comments here, just quickly saying that, uh, referencing when you were talking before, he's talking about railroad run and not spring run. This person also said uh, spring run was Boston and Maine. Okay. Slash Saratoga and Skylerville Railroad Railroad Run was the ending crow. Mm -hmm. So that was just clarification. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, Richard Wheeler asks, who chose the architecture of these stations? Was it architects, the railroads, or a combination of both? Uh, I'll take a guess at this. I don't know the architect, uh, um, uh, the, the architect, architect's name uh, for those beautiful stations uh, that DNH. Uh, uh, built in 1871 and, and 18 and 1900. Uh, my guess is, my guess is, is this DNH uh, chose the architecture. Uh, they looked around, they saw how popular uh, Second Empire was, and so that was uh, their first choice. I maybe, maybe, I don't know. Do you know anything about the who, who the architect or architect was? I, I, I do not know, unfortunately. All right, we'll continue on. Uh, Jeremy says that maybe there was another King Station in Corinth, but this was someone in Wilton on Mount McGregor, I think, and he included a link if anybody wanted okay. to go and check that oh. out. Okay, thank you, Jeremy. Yeah. All right, and then in your opinion, what is the most beautiful station in the New York? New England that one could visit, Saint Elisa and Jen. Uh, good question. Um, uh, I like the I like those stations along. Um, I like the the old DNH Main Line, now the Amtrak Line. I mean, uh, Fort Edward. Uh, I love the one of Plattsburgh. I think the one in Plattsburgh is is. Uh, it's just it's just beautiful. Uh, they've done a great job there. Uh, they have not changed it very much. That would be my favorite uh, in New York, New England, uh, that one could visit. Of course, in New England, it's the uh, South Station in Boston, um, or or any of the the the, the suburban stations that uh, H. H. Richardson built. Um, in the late 1800s, Framingham, 
uh, Newton. Uh, those are all beautiful stations as well. Okay. Did the Boston and Main Railroad have a branch at Saratoga? Uh, yes, they did. That was called the Fitchburg Line, Fitchburg Branch, um, which, which basically was uh, uh, in 1946, I think it was, uh, uh, taken over by the, uh, used by the, uh, the Schuylerville and Saratoga Railroad. So that's the one that served uh, Saratoga and um, you still see, as I said before, uh, reminders, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Saratoga and the uh, Schuylerville and Saratoga Railroad, uh, the beverage company there, and uh, just off of, uh, I think, uh, East Avenue is, is one reminder. Uh Trisha asks, did the Sunbeam Pullman cars that Robert Lincoln was uh, president of run through Saratoga? I don't know. I, I really don't know the answer to that. And I, I really couldn't hazard a guess. I'm, I'm not sure. So I'd have to beg off on that one. That's OK. We can't know them all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, Corey says, Mr. Chase, another question I have is when they rerouted the DNH row Outside of Saratoga was that the same year they rerouted it outside of Boston Spa. I never knew if they were both at the same time or one a few years before the other. Uh, that's a DNH right away. Um, I'm not sure of the dates either. Um, I, my guess is that they're about the same time. Uh, 1959 is when they um, did this. And uh, uh, they, they probably uh, thought about, for the same reasons, they would do some changing around at Balsam Spa. Uh, they were looking to ways to save money, uh, as all Eastern railroads were at that time. Uh, you know, the New York Central, Pennsylvania Railroad became the Penn Central, and then Conrail got into the act. And then now we've got uh, Norfolk Southern, CSX. So yeah, I mean, uh, my guess is about the same time. You know. uh, Hannah just wanted to note that the trolley line ran behind her home at Saratoga Lake, and they used to walk the old railroad ties all the way to Brown Road. Uh, Annie, uh, can I just oh, comment absolutely. on that? <laughs> um, well, the trolley line. Okay. All right. I was I was thinking about the when you said railroad ties. You can go into that. That park, I don't I forgot the name of it, uh, off of uh, 29, uh, Meadowbrook State, Meadow, what is it called? Meadow something. And you go back in there. I've never done it because I. Hannah says Bog Meadow. Yeah, 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 that's right. Uh, you will find railroad ties there too from the old, from the old uh, Skylar Road and Saratoga Railroad. Yeah, Bog Meadow, that's it. That's it. Uh, if, you, if you get back there, you're braver than I was. <laughs> uh, my most nostalgic, as I said, I didn't go into much detail, but I took many with my, with, mostly with my mother because she came from a family of 12. And there was always something doing down there, uh, uh, you know, weddings, uh, other other family events, and we would travel. <laughs> we would travel all night. We got on the train. I remember one time in 1946. I can still tell you the name of the train. Um, uh, I think I can anyway. Um, New York Special was the name of it. Left uh, left about 11:30 at night and got into Grand Central about seven o'clock in the morning. But just to come down the Hudson River Valley, Hud the Hudson Valley, as the sun was coming up, was a, something I'll never forget. Uh, I can't do that anymore, but still remains very clear in my mind. I love that. 
Okay. Uh, Saratoga and Featherville ran east of 9C along the lake. Trolley ran from Saratoga to Kederos Park on the west side of the lake. And they enjoyed your book. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, well, the last stuff. question is, uh, what is your favorite? Okay. What's your favorite railroad? Um, I, I, my favorite railroad are the Eastern railroads. Um, um, e and H for one, because uh, of of the many memories uh, of the train stations, uh, beautiful train stations, uh, the way they they beautified their engines, and the New York Central did the same thing on Twenty Century Limited. The also the uh, Empire State Express, uh, they modified, they streamlined, they employed very famous architects to, to do that. Uh, so those are the two of my, two of, my favorite railroads. Uh, movie starring Abbott and Costello featuring Gideon. <laughs> so the, the movie starring Abbott and Costello featuring Gideon Putnam and the Saratoga Flat Tracks. Do you think there was a possibility they rode up by rail? <laughs> how, old is the, how old is the movie? That's your key right there. Uh, <laughs> Probably, uh, in Saratoga flat track, 18, what, 1863, Gideon Putnam, he was around earlier than that. So my guess, my answer would be yes, very strong possibility. Plug your, your oh, book again. Plug your book. I will go I will go run back to my computer and share that link again. Uh, but we do have three more questions which people may have asked on the other okay. side, but if you want to field those, I'll which go run one? back and which plug one? your book. So just, yeah, I think I answered this one. Oh, yeah, we answered that one. Where was the 1870 federal style station located in town? What building stands currently at its site? 1870 federal style building. Hmm. 1870 station, 1871 um, is the, uh, of course, is the, is the uh, second empire that I talked about on the DNH. 1871. Um, I don't know of any federal um, federal style station. Uh, the the uh, Hudson Hudson Valley Railway Company stations, Boar, Bo, is uh, Bo, Boar, Bozar, and um, I don't know. I, I'd like to find out. What eight, where was the 1870 station federal style located in town? Not aware of, of any station that had that architecture. Uh, as far as the book is concerned, um, you can get it at uh, the one that's uh, rails in and around Saratoga Springs um, at, um, at uh, Barnes and Noble. Uh, is it bookstore downtown? I think CVS also carries it. Um, as, as far as, um, that was my last book with Arcadia. Um, they do take a uh, considerable time to, to clear publishing. Um, so I decided to, uh, to self-publish and I, I, I gave Nicole and Samantha, Jackie, uh, copy of one on the Saratoga North Creek uh, Railway, uh, the demise, the history and demise of that railroad. It's very interesting why it went out of business. I briefly covered it, but there is a self-published book that they have a copy of here. Um, and if you want to, if, if you would like an, a copy, uh, I'll see if I have any extra at home and I can mail it off to you, uh, we'll, we'll negotiate the price. And um, just uh, contact me, they have my email here uh, and we'll talk about it. Is there another question? Yeah, see this, this, this one rails in and around Saratoga Springs is on, available on Amazon and get it CBS, yeah. Right, exactly right. Um, and and uh, Barnes and Noble and the bookstore down bookstore downtown has it as well. 
I'm sorry. Two more questions. Which one? This here. Um, are you an architect by trade or a historical <laughs> preservationist or just passionate about all and this is a hobby? And that was from Annie Zass. Well, that's a good question, Annie. Um, I didn't have time to go into my background. I graduated basically uh, on the uh, engineering side of the house. I can tell you about stresses and strains and fracture and uh, that's my background. Uh, and uh, I pursued that uh, right to the end. I got a PhD in, in, in that area. I did not uh, pursue anything on the architectural side. So it, it comes as a hobby. And I um, uh, started to go get serious about writing uh, when I retired. Uh, from my former life, uh, working in that area of R&D, re research and development, 2012, I think it was, and um, been at it for the last, what, nine years or so, going on nine years, and I'm, I'm, I was never happier. Uh, it's, it's been a great experience uh, giving the talk here. Um, and, and elsewhere, I've given talks at the Saratoga Springs History Museum, uh, also uh, at the library here in Saratoga Springs. Uh, it, 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 to me, it's just, it just, it gives me a good feeling to keep the memories alive. And I, I'm very happy to do it. Thank you all for tuning in. I think, is that the last question? Uh, I think that is it. I think that that is it. So I wanted to say thank you, of course, to you, uh, Richard, for joining us. Thank you to everybody for coming on the call and for all the thoughtful questions. You never know how many people are going to have questions uh, during the program or not. So thank you all so much. Again, um, if you're not a current member, I'm going to drop a link for our membership in the chat and thank you to Jackie for being on our program too. We're excited to have her on the team. If anybody needs anything, you can email me at, I put my email in the chat below, B-A-B-A-B-I-E at saratogapreservation.org. Um, if you're interested in uh, Richard's other book or if you just have any additional questions or wanted to follow up on this program and keep an eye out for our future program in February. And, uh,